World RX return for the Karai Trans World RX of Hungary. And in this event, I'm going to... Well, I'm going to run through the event, actually. I'm going to run through the first round a little bit, then get into a bit more depth for round two. Before look at the supporting series, the end of event standings, and a little bit of reflection as well. So let's start off with round one, and it was carnage everywhere, both the World RX and the Euro RX for that first day, because Euro RX does both days, whereas World RX is a different event on each day. You had to do a lot of the anti dust watering, I mean, we saw it after Heat 1, I think even Race 1 of Heat 1, the Euro RX. Um, now, I'm going to get a little bit into ITV itself a bit later on, but the way it's set up meant that I missed race 2 of Heat 1 and Heat 2 um, in the World RX stuff. I did manage to catch Christopherson's issues in Heat 2, just about, but it meant that I missed out on some of the other storylines that unfolded in those races, a few of those crashes that happened. But it meant that, luckily, because the issues didn't pass on throughout the entire event because they had the lunchtime break by the time the semis came around we were able to catch back up it's bad luck for anderson in the semi-finals even worse though for rene munich meanwhile and i've got this sort of dismissively in the notes but the hansons did hansen things at the start of the final and i think that's a way of looking at it because the hansons have got that reputation of world rx i know Stofferson got into Grand Holm uh, whole years and I think Stofferson's on I think two reprimands for this season already but Kevin sent himself into Christopher and Christopherson into the wall and then with a little bit of help from Grand Holm, Timmy gets into the wall out of turn one what it meant was Nicholas Grand Holm ran off and got a comfortable win that's the first EV win of the uh, Battle of Technologies with Ola Christian Baby in second, and it was a hot, it was a popular hometown podium for the Hungarian hero uh, Janka Weist, who got that McGann, and they were talking about it over the course of the weekend. That McGann is underdeveloped compared to the other cars because it's the old Pro Drive machine. I don't think we've seen running since the pandemic that managed to get a podium in World RX. It's one of the beauties of this championship is whilst these cars are still comparatively underdeveloped they can still compete with the top class machines and then we get to round two and whilst there was some more order hell continued to break loose in the first race of the first heats we saw the kms squad run off into the distance as uh, everyone got into everybody else uh, Timmy and Gronholm squeeze OC Baby and take themselves out along with Baby's bumper. I think they were saying it was like four or five bumpers that Baby went through, maybe even six over the course of the weekend. Meanwhile, Christopher's rear gets loose into turn one and Kevin Hansen ends up in the wall. In race two, Anderson herself runs off into the distance. Feist gets clear of Pelfrain through Drake's strategy and Munich uh, ran into some kinds of issues to drop back. It was a similar kind of thing in race one one of heat two except for the fact that Marina was able to keep running. Pelfrain seemed to struggle they were saying it looked like it was diff because he was getting very loose in terms of exit uh, but Feist got the better of Pelfrain. And then in race two we saw Christophs on the outside put into the wall because uh, well it was another squeeze. This time Christofferson and Tibby Hansen squeezed Nicholas Gronholm. Kevin Hansen popped through um, Whilst Baby got a slow start, they were saying it looks more intentional when he gets the slower starts. And he managed to sneak through when the incident happened into second place behind Kevin Hansen. And, yeah, they made the most of it running off into the distance. What was funny, though, was Christophus did the fastest lap of the day with a 465, so I have no real wing, and then betted it with a 463. I think he joked on lap one, and there was a 65, 63, a 65, and a 63. Then we got to the semis, and both Hansons and both Grand Homel CED, the team's cars were along, were there with Pelfrain, meaning that someone will go home upset uh, from the electric cars. Pelfrain was the first person because he spun out of turn one. Then Grand Homel got a puncture, seemingly from a contact at the end of lap one. 
and then it was a battle of who was going to get better with the Joker. Kevin Hansen got the better of uh, Clara Anderson, but the only just. You could argue that she probably could have pushed him out of the way to get through, and pushing and the Hansen cars and Clara Anderson comes up a little bit when it comes to the final. SF2 store an even bigger upset though for Janka Weist, who seemingly moved across on OC Vaby, and then you see sparks flying as the wheels make contact, and he ends up in the wall and out the race. You saw him looking a bit winded, I hope that he's okay, and I hope that car can get recovered and get repaired quite easily because it was great to see him there and it would be great to see him either on the RRX grid or continuing to be the World RX grid at some point later in the season after the red flag was comfortably Christofferson from Baby from Munich. And then the final was a beautiful start from Clara Anderson who got past both the Hansons. Baby got a choker because he was behind uh, all of the Swedes. I think that's the best way to put it. Uh, Anderson was held, holding up both the Hansons. Uh, Stofferson took off though. What it meant was OC Vaby got the, the jump on Kevin Hansen after um, Kevin joked on lap two. And on lap three, <laughs> this was hilarious. Timmy Hansen tried to jump Clara Anderson by going to the Joker. But, but Clara Anderson also went to the Joker. And she was the one in front, so she managed to surprise Timmy, who had already committed early to Jokering. But what it meant was this beautiful move. And I've seen friends sending it to me, so obviously it's gotten a far reach. The whole weekend's gotten quite a far reach outside of the World RX sphere now. But by the end of lap three, everybody but Christofferson and Joker. Christofferson had a 10 second lead, I think. He ran 45s all race, which given that I said fastest lap of the day beforehand, that I noted with a 46.3, says about how dominant he was as it was a 1-2 for his team. Clara Anderson held on to P3. Timmy seemed like he was trying to push her out the way going towards the end, but yeah, she's able to hold on. I also want to have a bit of a look at the supporting series. Your RX1, uh, the, there were all kinds of different stories to follow throughout the event. I'm just going to really talk about the semi-finals and the finals. Um, in the semi-finals, four of the five Hungarians entered, ended up in, uh, who were in the semis, ended up in SF2, meaning at least one home hero would get through, but also meant that at least uh, one was guaranteed to not get through. I think SF1 was six cars, and I had five different cars, a 208, an i20, an Iris, a Polo, and two Audi S1s. Patrick O'Donovan got a beautiful joker, like it seemed slick, it reminded me of Peter Solberg's one at Hell, what, a decade ago now. Um, to clear Ilkinen on exit and undercut Bolevsky. Then semi-final two saw Damian Litvinovich trying to get the best of Mark Merza, but whilst he got the best of Merza, he lost out in the end to Tamash Karai, of course the guy who was the sponsor of the uh, Karai Trans World RX of Hungary. In the final was O'Donovan who made the jump off the start. Uh, Libertad and lost out to Bolevsky pre-Joker and then up from Benio in the Joker. When it came to the Joker merge, Karai got into Benio, and it was Karai who lost out as the two Hungarian drivers. He span off the front of the Peugeot and into the wall. And I managed to catch some of the other supporters as well. Um, I don't have much to say with the Eurorx 3, I'm not too much of an expert with that one. I managed to get a good look at the final of the Eurorx 2E though. Um, Alan Kotlinski, I got to see the heat that she'd won at some point during the event, but the final result didn't show it when she dropped off to fourth, I think it was. Marco Muru uh, was good when it came to the Joker undercut. Um, the top three all took the Joker on the final lap, but he'd already joked earlier and managed to sneak through. What I found funny was Nils Anderson, who I think was consistently on the podium in 2023, but didn't win, has ended up winning both the events so far this season. In terms of the end of event standings, Christofferson is quite comfortably clear of Baby now. I think the maximum points you can get for an event is 30. He's 25 points clear of his own teammate. 34 clear of both the PWR, X1E, um, C dealer team, teams, well, drivers. And then Timmy Hansen is one point behind Gronholm and Anderson, and Kevin Hansen another point back. Then it's Bergstrom, who of course wasn't here, neither Bergstrom nor Evian was there. Pelthren is only is still a point behind Bergstrom, showing how good that uh, Polo RX 1E still is. And Janka Weist was is one point clearer of Renner Munich, who's done both events. Which is a good showing from uh, 
for the Hungarian. It turns the reflections on the event. It shows a great success of the Battle of Technologies, as both EVs and ICEs have had outright wins this season. But it shows that RX, Euro, RX and World RX still have a way to go. Euro RX1 is much healthier. There were 17 cars entered in for Hungary, meaning the five didn't make it to the semis, which included the Fabia, which was, was a World RX machine, and also the Seat of Bandi August, whilst the other Seat of Rennie Munich got to the final of World RX. And I don't know what the solution is for that, whether it's to lower the costs of World RX or making sure that people don't have to commit to every event, because it would be great for them to be able to guarantee that 12 people are in the event. If it's a hard limit that you have to have 12 people and no more in every event, because of the way the point system is now, then so be it. But at the same time, your RX I think is still using, I could be wrong on this, the old system with top qualifiers. And it's still working out for them. Because you managed to get 17 into 12 and have some brilliant heat races really good semi-finals and close action all the way through to the end of the final so whilst this point system does work for World RX it's almost like it's plastering over a bigger issue and then there's also the issue of rally tv the platform the way it's designed means that if something overruns it the, the bit that you're looking for just gets cut off so like i said earlier i missed the second races of both of the heats for the first day of Hungary, for the first event of Hungary, because of the knock-on impact of delays. But also on top of that, um, you have the issue that it was at the same time as an ERC event again, and with WRC promotion running all of these and all of these being shown on Rally TV, you can't really afford to do that. What you'd really want is a weekend off for each of them. And whilst it means to say Mike Chen does the World RX and Vex Williams does the ERC, you could use your talent a lot more effectively if you do things differently. Because you want to make it so that Rally TV is this great overall package, right? And you know, ideally you'd like to see it start to get included in other subscriptions like a Eurosport subscription or a BT subscription. Uh, because those in the UK I think used to cover WRC. But you want to make it so that, that package is affordable. Tracks like uh, Nereyad are great. We need those kinds of tracks in the calendar. And it's great to see Montalegre still be a staple. It's great to see the uh, return of Metet for Belgium, just like we'd seen Lydon Hill last year for the UK. I'm not opposed to new tracks, but I think the success of Rallycross has got to be measured by the grassroots events. So a return to, say, a Loyak or an Estering. And then the pulling in of viewers. And if it means you start to put, say, the heats for free on YouTube, like you do the qualifying stage for the ERC or Shakedown for the WRC, then so be it. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.